I can still remember the musty smell of the prison's chapel. There, every Wednesday, I, along with several other students, would meet to take a course entitled Death and Dying with several inmates from the prison's hospice program. I decided to take the course because, following German philosopher and social critic Theodore Adorno, I believe that the condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. Standing at the lectern, I implore my peers to not endorse notions of justice that are imbued with an ethic of punishment, but rather to espouse ideas of justice that are pervaded with an ethic of love. In other words, I was encouraging us to be advocates for a notion of justice that does not ask who did it and how can we punish them, but rather who was hurt and how can we make them whole. This experience made concrete what I had only understood in abstraction, that modes of education intent on creating a critical citizenry, the lifeblood of a democracy, must be informed by the voices and experiences of the most marginalized among us. My personal statement for the Rhodes Scholarship captures a lot of what motivates me as a thinker, a person, and a scholar. I grew up in North Philadelphia, 2030 Diamond, only a couple blocks away from Temple University in a really tough neighborhood, a rough neighborhood, but also a really rich neighborhood, um, a strong neighborhood. And it's shaped so much of what I do, the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I dress. The opportunity to study at a university isn't one that a lot of people in my community necessarily have. But my story is one that shows that if we're committed to developing those students, a mission temple was founded on, you see the fruit that it can bear. For me, education is all about self and social transformation. I think everyone has a voice, it's just that some people are unheard. And what I seek to do through my scholarship is make sure those voices are heard so that others have the same opportunities that I've had.